lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson. to win. 
Join us for another episode of Change. Pastor Jim Hampton. Well, thank you everybody for being here today. You love the Lord today. I hope you do. Well, are you a winner or do you feel like a winner today? Have you ever felt like you were a team player or did you ever want to be part of a winning team? I think each of us started out wanting to be accepted as a winner and be accepted on a team early in life, didn't we? I remember my early years in school, and I think most of us, if not all of us, wanted to be invited to be a part of the in-group in our school or to be a part of a club or part of a team, especially if we wanted to be a part of the winning team. Nobody wants to be a loser. Everybody wants to be a winner. Everybody wants to be accepted. I had the desire, as I was growing up in elementary school as a young fella, but my memories along that line in my early years, my memories weren't, they weren't happy ones. I remember that I wasn't a popular person when I was young. I was awkward. I was skinny. I was a not growing at a mature rate, the same as everybody else around me. I was bashful, scared of my own shadow, and not physically coordinated for sports, but still I wanted to be involved in sports. I wanted to be accepted like everybody else would be. We all played baseball when it was baseball season, and we played football when it was football season. We played soccer. I wanted to be accepted, but I stood out, and I stood out for all the wrong reasons, if you know what I mean. Being accepted as a member of the elite or the in-group was totally out of my reach. It might have been out of your reach, too, as you went through the awkward stage of early life, being 10, 12. Things develop at different stages for different people, but I wanted to play sports. I wanted to play it with the other guys, you know, the the macho guys. And many of my classmates in those years, they had all matured at an earlier age, matured earlier than I had. I was still awkward and stumble over my own feet and I besides I was afraid of my own shadow like I say I I was afraid to talk afraid to have friends but I still would show up to try to be part of the team I admired those other guys they they were so muscular they could hit the ball they could run with a the football they could kick the ball in soccer they they knew just what to do it just seemed to come naturally for them and I I certainly didn't resemble them in any way. Most of them outweighed skinny me by probably 15, 20 pounds, maybe more. So when the time came to select team members out on that field, this was the worst time for me. And it still is in my memory, and I can feel when I start talking about it, I can feel the pain and the shame that came to me during those times I wanted to be part of that baseball team as we standed on that baseball diamond and selected team members they would have predetermined captains the teacher would select them be two captains and we all classmates would join in a group around them and they begin to point to the ones they wanted on their team the B team would pick this guy and the The A team would pick that guy, and by the time the crowd had been been diminished and all the teams had been almost filled, I would be standing there alone. It was an emotional, a stressful, very disappointing, very embarrassing time of my life to be standing there and finally selected just because you were the last guy standing there. That wasn't a good thing to remember. And I still remember the pain. And some of you out there may have experienced the same thing, maybe not at that moment in your life, but at other moments in your life. Maybe you were left standing there alone too and not accepted by others around you, by your peers for one way or another. 
But I tell you, as I grew older and I found the Lord, I have realized that I have I have been accepted by the Father. I don't have to change myself. I don't have to go to the gym and put on a lot of muscles. I don't have to wear certain clothes to be accepted by the in-group. I don't have to comb my hair the certain way or wear certain clothes or, or talk a certain way or learn a new language just to be accepted by people and especially by God. I don't have to do that. God accepts me just the way I am. Galatians 4 Verses 4 through 7 in the New Living Testament says, But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the the law so that he could adopt us, adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of, of God and the Spirit of the Son, into our our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. We have a Father, a loving Father now, who accepts us the way we are. We're no longer slaves to those things that we had in the past. We're God's own child, and since we are his children, God has made us his heir. Aren't you glad that we don't have to? Worry about whether or not God loves us. He loves us, and he's loved us before the beginning of time. If you have Jesus in your heart, God is truly your father. You have been accepted. He didn't have to select me out of a group. I didn't get selected because I was the last one standing. I wasn't the most outstanding in the group. God loved me, and he selected me because... He loves me. I wasn't just the last choice. God selected me because he wants us all to be saved and changed. He wants us all to become a member of his family. And he has a winning team. If you belong as a child of God into the family of God, you are on a winning team. You have been selected. Praise God. All those memories that of the past can be erased and put aside knowing that God, the one who really matters, the one who selects us for all eternity, he has selected me, he has selected you. All we have to do is say yes to him. We become citizens of heaven. We become legally adopted in the high courts of heaven. In fact, the adoption papers were written and duly signed by the Father himself and sealed by the stamp of the Holy Spirit, who is within you if you've accepted Jesus as your Savior. My name and your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life that has kept security within the courts of heaven. And since our name, your name, my name is written there, someday you will be there also in heaven to be with your God and your Savior forever, forevermore. The Father anxiously awaits your arrival. It's not like when they were choosing teams back there in elementary school. They weren't anxious to select me. They may not have been anxious to select you or even see you in the crowd. But God is anxious to see you and me arrive in heaven. But in the meantime, you and I are constantly on his mind. And we can rest assured that we are on his mind constantly with loving care. He cares for us. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to think about us because he wants to. That's why he cares about us. That's why he thinks about us because he wants to. He holds you in the palm of his hand today if you've accepted him as your Savior. And he loves you and wants you to be part of his family. Well, we all now have a past, don't we? Yet he loves us. It doesn't matter what our past is, whether we had that experience on the ball field in elementary school or we had some experience in high school or college, or whether we're orphans and we had no family at all or we've been deep in sin. It doesn't matter. You and I can be accepted by the Lord because he loves us and he wants us to be part of his family. He wants to be our God and he wants to love us forevermore. No matter what your circumstances or experiences are, God loves you the same as anybody else around you. 
as I would stand in that group hoping up on hope that someone would select me, I felt so insignificant. I felt so out of it. I felt so unlike everybody else. But praise God in life now. I may not be like everybody else, but praise God, God loves me just like he does everybody else, just like he loves everybody else. And he loves you just like he loves everybody else. Even if you are different, even if you are the same, if you look just like the guys or gals next to you, it doesn't matter. He loves you. And you stand out in his mind. He loves you, and he can pick you out of any crowd. He can say, there you are. I'm thinking about you today. I'm preparing a life for you. Just walk with me. We all had early experiences as we were growing up. In early lives, we've all made mistakes. We've all found ourselves on the losing side of life. Somewhere in our life, we've had experiences that could have been better and could have been a lot better if we'd had Jesus in our lives back then. But know now that in the circumstances of your life, in the experiences you're having, God will take care of the scars and the burdens that we carry with us from the past. He will get rid of them. He'll get rid of those disappointments. He'll erase those embarrassments and those stressful moments so that you don't have to keep them with you. Now, I, I, I share that experience today because I'm sharing sharing with you what happened. And, of course, it brings up brings up memories of the feelings but I can go through life without thinking about that and and really I can think about that in the past now and kind of laugh because God has changed me so much and God can change you but I'm here to tell you that God loves you he loves everybody out there he loves everybody in this crowd today he loves everyone who's listening to this if you're carrying any kind of burden or scars from your past, know that God will take away that discouragement that brought you down back then. God is ready to carry you through to the end, to encourage you, to remind you that he loved you just as much as anyone else. He can change the way we think of ourselves. Praise God. Aren't you glad? Because I didn't like myself back then. I was once skinny and bashful. I was a kid that no one else even hardly knew was around because I was so quiet. God has changed me and accepted me, and he can change you and accept you. He can make us feel like winners. We are winners. I'm now a chosen member of God's team, aren't you, if you've accepted Jesus in your life? If you haven't, now is the time just to repent and say, I'm sorry for my sins. I want to be accepted as your son or daughter, Father. Please accept me. He will. His arms are open wide. He can make you feel like you're on a championship winning all-star team because that's what to belong to God's family feels like. If you have Jesus in your heart, you've been accepted by God. You are on a championship winning all-star team. God has never lost a game in his whole life. And He's always existed. I don't have any terms to express his existence. Life, I can say that. He's never lost a battle. His team has never lost. And I'm on a winning team. You're on a winning team. Hallelujah. He can change the saddest and most discouraged person that we can be into the most encouraged and motivated person you have ever seen. We become happy and successful in life and literally become an overachiever, don't we? We just have to steadily hold on to God's hand. Let him guide us through this perilous life, this maze of life, these days that are nothing but maze of confusion and decisions to be made. Let God help you make those decisions of life. Become a strong person. Because of what God is, not because of what we are. We can still be a person that the world would reject. But God hasn't rejected us, and he will change us into something that is wonderful. Let me just tell a little story here. There was once a strong Christian lady who had overcome the pain of her early childhood, just like we can. Let me tell you Millie's story. 
at the age of seven. Millie was the victim of polio. She wrote and she said, my real mother put me up for adoption when I was eight years, years old. I guess my real mother couldn't cope with my having polio. I tried to feel loved in my new home, but it was so hard to feel really loved. Who would love me? I had polio. I couldn't walk like all the little, the little kids could. She said each time when my stepmother left me off at Sunday school, I would always ask her to, if I could wear her locket. Now, she always thought it was because I loved the locket and wanted to have it with me. No, it wasn't. I had an ulterior motive. I knew if I took something of value of hers and put it around my neck, she would come back for me. I was afraid she wouldn't come back for me. I felt so terrible about myself, so unworthy that I didn't think if I, if I didn't have her locket, would she actually come back for me? It's terrible that anybody would feel unwanted like that, isn't it? And that anybody would feel that way about themselves. But today, I'm happy to say Millie is a brand new person. When she was 21, she asked Jesus into her life, and she now knows she is loved and highly valued by her Savior. And her God picked her out, picked her out. Didn't care that she had polio, couldn't walk like everybody else. Didn't care that she felt rejected. Didn't care that she was bashful and unwanted. All she knows now is God loves her as much as everybody else. Even those who can walk and run and play sports and win gold medals at the Olympics. She is loved the same as anybody else. And she is so amazed in her heart, but so grateful. She now knows as a grown-up lady that her worth is not measured by her legs, whether she walks with a limp or not, or whether she can walk at all. You see, God values each one of us. He values each of his creations. God loves each one of us, no matter who we are, what we look like, no matter what condition our bodies are in. In fact, God loves us so much as Christians that he literally has adopted us into his family. He didn't have to do it. He wants to. Nobody told him he had to. There was no rules that said he had to. Nobody dared him to do it. He wanted to do it because he loves us, and he loves you. He loves you, girl. He loves you, gal. He loves you, sir. He loves you, man, whoever you are. He loves you. And Ephesians 1, verse 4 and 5 says, Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us. In Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. Great pleasure. Now when I was standing in that group and I was the last one standing, nobody chose me out of pleasure. Believe me. It was because they had to. The teacher was watching. They had to select me, but God didn't have to select me. He wanted to. He wanted to select you, sir or gal, whoever you are. If you feel bad about yourself, if you think you're not worthy, God loves you. God loves you. And if you were the only one living in this world back 2,000 years ago, he would have died on the cross for you. We can become a member of of that championship winning all-star team. And we can also become a child of the king. Hallelujah. Doesn't your heart just thrill to know that you're accepted by the creator of everything? The one who created it all. You can look out your window of your house or your car as you travel down the road and say to yourself, the God who created all this and made it all possible loves me, chose me, I don't have to feel bad about myself, no matter whether I'm a millionaire or not, or whether I look pretty or handsome, whether I'm short or tall, fat or skinny. God loves me. He loves me. And I don't have to change for him to love me. He loves me. There were several people in the Bible that were adopted. Did you know that? And God loves them and loved them. Moses wasn't raised by his own parents, as you recall. He was adopted by the daughter of Pharaoh, and he 
He was raised in the courts of Egypt. But God loved him, and God adopted him. Samuel was a miracle baby. His mother was barren, and she promised God that if he gave her a son, she would give him to the Lord all of his days. And so Samuel was raised by the priest Eli. God loved Samuel. Esther, when her parents died, she was raised by her uncle Mordecai. And because of the faithfulness of her uncle, she became one of the great queens of her day. Esther was loved by God. And as you recall, Jesus was raised by a stepfather, Joseph. We're adopted. But you have to accept that adoption, don't you, to be a child of God. It doesn't happen just by being born. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You have to hold up your hand and say, Jesus, I want to be part of your team, and he'll adopt you. He'll take you into that great winning team that never loses. You can find, you can search the Bible, and you'll find it. There's no one in the Bible who was adopted who ever grew up to be a loser. We children of God, every one of us, we're not losers. We're all winners. We're winners, not because of ourselves. There are some of us who probably think we're winners from our own ambition, our own desires, and our own strength. But no, God gave it all to us, every bit of it. All the riches, all the knowledge, all of the enthusiasm, it all has come from God who loves us. God never looks on adoption as a curse like some people do. It's an opportunity for success, isn't it? Heavenly success. It's a declaration that we've we've been chosen, we're loved, we're accepted, we're cherished by God, the creator of it all. 1 John 3, 1 says, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. We're children of God and he lavishes his love on us. He watches over us. You don't know how many times God has taken care of you, kept you out of trouble, and answered your prayers. You have no idea, and I have no idea how many times he's answered my prayers or gone ahead of me and kept me from problems. Only God knows. We have been truly blessed by God. Galatians 4, 6 says, because you are sons or daughters, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. An heir, a son, a daughter. We're all cherished and loved by God. God loves you and me, even if the world may reject us. It doesn't matter what others think about us. God loves us. God doesn't go through fads where he likes you and loves you today, but he changes his mind tomorrow. No, he's always the same, never changing. Being adopted by God has one major difference from the world's adoptions or the secular adoptions. If we were to to adopt a child in this world, for instance, we would be making the choice of who would be that we adopt. Now, we adopted a son many years ago, and we chose the one we wanted The child had nothing to do with it. The child usually doesn't get the chance to say, okay, I want those parents. No. The child is usually out of the process. But in order for us to be adopted by God, he has already chosen us. He chose us. But to become a Christian, we have to agree with God's choice, don't we? We have to say, yes, Father, I agree. You have chosen me, and I choose you back. I want to say yes. He's just waiting for you to say yes. I want to adopt you, God says. All you have to do is say yes. Raise your heart to him. Tell him you're sorry for your sins. Repent of your sins. Ask him to be your savior. Say yes to him, and he'll be your father from now on, forever and ever. This is what John meant when he said in the Bible then, John 1, verse 12, he said, To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. You may say yes to Jesus. You have to accept him as your Savior, don't you? You can say yes to Jesus anytime. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what your circumstances are. 
how much you think you're worth. Just say yes to Jesus, and he'll become your Savior. God the Father will become your Father. The world has a hard time understanding that you can't become a child of God by being born into a a Christian family. Some people think they're Christians because their family are Christians. No, it's not like being a Republican or a Democrat family. No, you are a child of God. It's a personal thing. You have to do it yourself. You can't have anybody else do it for you. You have to be the one to say yes to Jesus. And you can't become a Christian just because you're a member of your family uh, takes you to a church or takes you to a building, or takes you to a, a pastor or a priest or takes you to somewhere else that's considered holy. It doesn't make you a Christian. Saying yes to Jesus is the only thing that makes you a Christian. The only way to become a Christian, a true child of God, is to make that decision for yourself, in your heart. It has to be a conscious decision. It's it's a decision each one has to make on their own. You have to believe and repent and then accept Jesus as your Lord, yourself. Then God gives you what you don't deserve, a place in his family. We don't deserve it, do we? No. We can't do anything to deserve it. God gives us what we don't deserve. He says, I want you. You say yes, and that is it. That's the contract. You get a place on his championship winning all-star team. He pointed in the crowd and said, I want you. You have to just step forward and say yes, and you become his child. Praise God, it's so much easier than becoming a member of a team on a playground in elementary school at the age of 10. It's so much easier. You don't feel deserving, but take it. It's there. It's yours. He's pointing to you and says, I want you to say yes, and you will be changed in your heart, in your mind. You will think so much better of yourself. The world will look better to you. Your life will look much better, and he'll change it into something beautiful. I want to finish with a story about a man called Ben Hooper who was – he was twice elected governor of Tennessee, and he told the story about his childhood. He said, "He said my mother wasn't married when I was born, so when I started to school, my classmates had a name for me, and it wasn't a very nice one. I used to go off by myself both at recess and during lunch because of the taunts of my playmates, which hurt me deeply. What was worse was going downtown on Saturday afternoon and feeling every eye was burning a hole through me because they all knew about my past. I felt they were all wondering who my real father was because I wondered myself. When I was about 12, a new preacher came to our church. I would always go into church late and slip out early to avoid people's stare. I didn't want people to see me coming and going, so I did it in secret. But one day the preacher said the benediction so fast that I got caught in a rush of people. and I had to walk out with a crowd. Those people I was trying to avoid were pushing about me, and they were looking at me, and I felt every eye in church was on me. And just about the time I got to the door, I looked up, and the preacher was standing right next to me, looking right at me, staring a hole through me. And he shouted, Who are you, son? Whose boy are you? He asked it in such a loud manner that every person stopped in their tracks and looked at me. I felt that old weight coming upon me right there in front of everyone. It was like a big black cloud. Even the preacher was putting me down, I thought. But as the preacher looked down at me, studying my face, he began to have this big smile of recognition on his face. And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know who you are. I see the family resemblance. You are, you are, why, you are a son of God. With that, he slapped me across the back and said, boy, you've got a great inheritance. Now go and claim it. That, Ben Hooper said, was the most important single sentence anyone had ever said to me. Go and claim it. I tell you, folks, no matter who you are, 
Jesus has already chosen you. He wants you. He accepts you. Claim that love, God's love. He's reaching out to you today, no matter who you are. You've got a great inheritance waiting for you, don't you? Just claim it. Be encouraged today, because in God's eye, there's no one better than you. You are the apple of his eye. There's no one better suited for his love and grace than you. You are on the starting lineup of his championship winning all-star team, no matter how you feel about yourself. He's never lost a game, and with you on his team, he can't lose. He's on your side. He's your team coach. He's your God. If you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, he's your comforter, and he lives within you. His son died for you, and he can be your father. Just accept him today. Repent and say you're sorry. Accept him as your Savior today. Go and claim it. He's saying, I chose you, now choose me. And he's saying, just love me. I will do the rest. Until next time, this is Pastor Jim Hampton saying, keep looking up and praising the Lord. I'm 